rotation or just flat out not practicing in the case of eight of the Titans yesterday. They're in a bad way right now. It's not great, Bob. I would tell you that there's there's only – remember going back to Sunday where Mike Vrabel's post-game press conference, I'm pretty sure we played the audio for you guys. The 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 It was almost like we were trying to offer him, hey, Mike, like you're kind of – you know, you're working with a lot of mixed and matched parts right now. You know, he's not going to say, yeah, our team's just not good enough to win at this point. But when you see this list in front of you, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. That's week five of the season. They're not the only NFL team going through a situation like this. The Colts fans are listening to this or hearing this or seeing this injury report and being like, boo-hoo. You know how many times our quarterback has been in and out already through five weeks of the season? We just got our first win. So it's not like it's totally uncommon, but it is still pretty shocking to see in front of you. So how they manage this, who ends up being available, because of note, A.J. Brown, though limited, did participate in practice yesterday. Caleb Farley was a full participant. Uh, Somebody who is not on this injury report, who I felt might be, is Christian Fulton, who limped in and out of that game several times against the Jets. That's a good sign. You have Bud Dupree limited. You have Rashawn limited. You have Danico Autry limited. Not practicing. Racy McMath, Taylor Lewan, Brett Kern, Julio Jones, Tommy Hudson, Aaron Brewer, and Jayon Brown, who we'll get to in a little bit. What is your level of concern right now ahead of the Jacksonville Jags game? Just knowing how depleted this roster may be. Because it's it's a fair assessment right now to look at this and say, the Jags are not a good football team. But the Jets aren't overwhelmingly great either. And you are dealing with a situation where you are going into this basically with maybe not even, not even a one arm tied behind your back. Maybe both. So it's not unrealistic to look at this and say, yeah, there should be a level of concern about the Tennessee Titans heading into Jacksonville this weekend. I don't think it's a gimme. I didn't think last week was a gimme. And people, I feel, laughed in my face. This is difficult under normal circumstances because you're dealing with professional football players on both sides, no matter how big a laughing stock Urban Meyer is right now. He is largely irrelevant. As, as an article I just read, in the New York, uh, in uh, from the New York media, the New York Jets ESPN reporter Rich Samini, where he's talking about a third and six audible that C.J. Mosley made. He's not supposed to make in Robert Sala's defense, but he diagnosed Ryan Tannehill's check at the line of scrimmage. Ended up making a play in the fourth quarter that changed the game. These are still pros. They're still capable of causing you problems, even if their coaching staff isn't telling them to do so. Look at this injury report and be realistic about where your football team is right now because it's kind of in a bad way. 615-737-1045 is how you get in on the conversation. Um, Sprickler, I think is how I'm – it's either Sprickler or S. Sprickler. I don't know. On Twitch, either way, please discuss what J-Mart and Ramon discussed this morning about the Titans potentially putting pressure on players to play hurt. Now, I did not hear that discussion. So I will, uh, and you'll hear some audio from J. Martin Ramon's show this morning because Wesley Woodyard came on and, of course, as is his custom, breathes fire about the current situation with the Tennessee Titans. I think he's made his feelings eloquently known. But I listen, I don't know about that. I don't, there's no, I have no evidence of that. So that, to say that it doesn't happen at all in the NFL and that players don't feel pressure sometimes to play through things, Because it's, are you hurt or are you injured? Are you available? I don't, I mean, they care about what, or at least the Titans, Mike Vrabel, why he's so protective of injuries is because he is trying to be overly protective of the players and the pressure that's put on them. So I would say here, more than anything, the evidence to the contrary of that conversation, What I I don't know if J. Martin Ramon had heard something to that effect, whether they were accusing the Tennessee Titans. So forgive me without the context. I don't want to assign any opinion to them that they didn't actually have. But what I'll say to you is Taylor Lewan, who has spent, who has had several injuries, has had concussions, 
has had the ACL tear, has had various issues that he's had throughout the course of his career under Mike Frabel, has said several times over that this staff is different in the way that they kind of ensure that players are as good as humanly possible before they end up giving them the green light to take the field. So I would say that that premise with the Titans probably, I mean, I'm not saying players don't feel pressure to play. I'm just saying that the coaching staff, at least publicly, does as much as humanly possible to keep that pressure externally from reaching the guys on the roster. 615-737-1045 is how you get involved in the conversation. Bill is in Spring Hill, wants to uh, chat it up this morning. What's up, Bill? Hey, guys. How y'all doing, man? We're great, boss. Hey, it's a beautiful day in Middle Tennessee. Always. Uh, always, always, baby. But, hey, my, my biggest thing right now, I'm seeing a lot of high-dollar players that are in there and always seem to be something wrong with them. They have some problem. And I know that's that's the pro league. That's the big time. You're on the big stage. But, I mean, come on. Give me a break. These guys are making big money. Get your butt in there and play and give somebody a, a little bit of credit when they are playing and make them plays and make them happen. We got to get something turned around somehow, some way. I'm going to sit back and listen to you guys. Thank you very much. Hey, I appreciate the call, Bill. 615-737-1045. But see, Bill, Bill couldn't Bill's call couldn't have come at a better time, right? Because that's the kind of external pressure you're talking about that the coach is trying to protect the players from. Now, you can say why why do the professional athletes need protecting? Well, they can put themselves in worse positions as a as a fan. Of course, the natural the natural reaction is to say, "Hey, lay it on the line. You're playing for my football team." My happiness is directly correlated to your success and, more importantly, your failure on Sundays. I expect you to go out there and perform, rightfully so. Now, what I would tell Bill, and I understand why there, there's a contingent of sports fans that feel that way, what I would tell Bill is it's, you know, they are being paid well, but it's not like Bill is the one paying them uh, exorbitantly, right? That money comes from the franchise. Now, you're, you're, whether you're a season ticket holder, whether you're going to single games, whether you're attending Titans, you know, whether you're buying merch, whatever, you do contribute to that, that money that the athletes have and that the franchise have to spend on the athletes. But what I'm saying to you is that's what Mike Vrabel is trying to do with the way that he handles injuries. He's trying to protect the athletes from those external pressures that say, hey, I don't care how you're feeling. Get out there, gut it out, do something heroic. When sometimes that, that level of heroism, while commendable, can also put their long-term sustainability in danger. We'll continue this conversation coming up next. Rob will lead us off. If you want to weigh in on the injuries, you're welcome to do so. We will also be joined by Jalen Fry Sadler, the offensive lineman from Austin P, who's just trying to get a job with the Titans. That's coming up next. I'm Buck Rising, and this is 104.5 The Zone. Blaine and Mickey talk so much football that they've gotten inside their own heads. What all is Mike Vrabel's aura comprised of? Maybe that's, that's aura? Aura. 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 <laughs> now it's funny. Not, aura. Now I don't even know how to say it. Someone call in and help Mickey pronounce. I'm in my own head now. Blaine and Mickey. Today from 1 to 3 on 104.5 The Zone.
they're spending or what their organizations are spending on players. And we had people point out earlier that, I mean, for all of the guys who are on the injury report, Bud Dupree, Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, even though a limited participant yesterday, there's a lot of, you know, well-compensated individuals, Taylor Lewan, on that list. Now, how much their their bank accounts should pressure them to play through injuries that could spiral on them, I think is a matter of, I I personally, I don't like that approach. I understand why fans do and why fans think that way, whether I consider it to be right or wrong. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue that conversation here in just a second. Also, remember that Jalen Fly Sadler, offensive tackle, formerly of Austin P, trying to get a job with the Tennessee Titans, will join us here in just a second. But Rob in Nashville has been patient, patiently waiting and wants to weigh in on the injury report. What's up, Rob? Hey, hey, thanks. Uh, just uh, listening to you on this topic here, you know, I'll just say that, you know, I think, uh, you know, a guy like Taylor Wong, take him, you know, for example, uh, the guy is staying hurt. He's getting paid, I mean, millions and millions of dollars. I mean, when do the Titans pull the trigger on this guy? I mean, this this guy here, he's, I mean, he when he is out there on the field, he's playing well. But when he's not on out there, which he hadn't been out there very long. So, anyway, I mean, enough is enough. The Titans have put up with him, I mean, too long now. So, I mean, they got rid of Marcus Mariota. I understand why they got rid of him. That's a different topic. He wasn't producing. But Taylor Wan, I mean, he's just staying too injured. They, they need to do something about this. This is ridiculous. And, you know, my hat's off to, you know, the quarter, quarterback Tanner Hill. I mean, he's just getting buried out there every week. I mean, and Taylor Wan is just not the problem out there with, for, for as that go, you know, with all the other guys that's starting out there too. I'm I'm one of the ones too. You pay those guys, they need to be out there. Some, I mean, I don't care what you do. Get them out there or, you know, your second string. I mean, why isn't the – All right, thanks for the call, Rob. I, I, you, uh, I, I understand the point that you were making. I think we were going in a little bit of circles there. But, yeah, I mean, listen, you, you are entitled to feel that way, or at least I understand that kind of entitlement, whether I agree with that entitlement or not, and that's something that's going to factor in this offseason. I mean, pull the trigger. Listen, Lawan just tore his ACL. Outside of that, it's not like he's been an injury-plagued player. I know he went down a couple of times before tearing his ACL, but he found ways to get back out on the field. Taylor Lawan has been up until the last year and, what, four games, he's been hugely durable. So that's a recency bias complaint. But we'll spend some more time on the offensive line and what kind of issues that's causing for Ryan Tannehill. John Glennon of Sports Illustrated wrote a really good piece. In the meantime, we're joined now by Jalen Fly Sadler, offensive tackle formerly of Austin P, who's been standing outside of the Titans facility. He's been holding up a sign. He's been posting motivational videos of his workout, 6'8", 325. He just wants an opportunity and a team that could use some additional offensive line help. Jalen, what's going on, boss man? Oh, man, what's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing, man? I'd like to thank uh, Titan Nation, man. Shout out Titan Nation for really all the love and support, man. I appreciate you for uh, allowing me on here and giving me the platform to be able to tell my story, man. I appreciate that. No, it's a it's a fa- it's a fascinating story and, and one that's I've certainly got a lot of respect for with the obvious commitment that you have with trying to make this dream happen for yourself. So let's let's start here because obviously – you're a familiar face to a lot of people in the Middle Tennessee area, given that you spent time in Clarksville at Austin P. now pursuing your NFL dream here in Nashville. So give us a little bit of background What for the people who are not familiar with your story. How did you come to uh, find Austin P. and how did they come to recruit you? And what, what I guess, with as respectfully as I can ask, Jalen, what makes you think that you can cut it at this level? Oh, uh, you know what, man? I love it. And I truly do appreciate the opportunity. Um, like I said, what makes I think I can cut it and what makes you think I can make it at this level is that I've been through adversity before. I've been through trial before. Like I said, like I said in my interview, I grew up 10, 10 people in a two-bedroom household. 
I grew up having my lights cut off. I grew up having um, having no food in the house. Mom and little mom losing a job. Dad and dad not being around. I've been through a few dark places and through all that trial and through all that tribulation, I've earned. I've learned the art of resilience. I earned the art of re- resilience and knowing that I cannot put any limitation on my mind. I can't put any limitations on my body. So just keep fighting and keep pushing and just. Uh, just keep climbing that mountain and eventually it will happen. I don't really believe in, um, I believe in having a positive attitude. And once you have a positive attitude and you have bulletproof confidence, you're going to see opportunities. You're going to see opportunities and not only see it, but you're going to be able to act on opportunities. And so I only had one scholarship offer. I only had one scholarship uh, offer out of high school. I played one, I played one year of varsity football uh, because of injury. I ended up tearing my ACL in high school. But I had one uh one offer. I had one offer out of um high school. It was Austin P. The original plan was for me to come in and red shirt. But that wasn't because we had a they had a um tackle. He played a few years, played a few years there, and like we got into camp. He had scouts coming in, Raiders, Jets. He had multiple he had multiple guys coming in to, um coming in and watching him play. Turns out I, I I didn't have I didn't have in mind that I was gonna redshirt. I had in mind that I was coming in to start, so that's what my work ethic reflected. Sure. My work at my work ethic reflected that. I ended up coming in and starting as a true freshman. Spent some time spent some time there. As we know, the wheel spent, the wheel spent, and the, those coaches who um, recruited me, they they ended up they ended up leaving. And short after, I ended up leaving as well. So I, I I love I love the mentality because it's it's so hard I guess Jalen for a lot of people to kind of comprehend the situation that you outlined. Yes, Very few people have had to experience that kind of that kind those kind of depths and figured out how to rise above it. What was the if I can ask what was the lowest moment that allowed you to create this mindset to compartmentalize and understand okay it no matter how bad it seems at various points, this is how I'm going to approach this particular situation. This is how I'm going to let it, you know, kind of be the theme of what my approach to life is going to be, because I feel like so, so few people have to experience or uh, are made to experience that kind of adversity that allows them to push through. You know, this, this, this is actually probably one of the most common questions I get asked, like what actually turned you, what actually changed your mindset? I don't believe it was a single, I don't, I don't believe it was a single event. I believe it was a chain of events that really shaped me to who I am, like having a, having a torn, like having a torn ACL and then having just growing up, like just growing up, growing up in poverty, growing up poverty stricken and seeing stuff like that, um, um, having a, having an absent father for some parts of my life, like that stuff, that stuff right there. And then having great mentors who actually helped me out along the way, who helped, helped lead me and guide me. Now me and my fathers, uh, we have great relate. We have a great relationship, but just seeing all that trial and tribulation that really helped shape me who I am. That really, that really helped shape me who I am. And I mean, like I said, growing up 10 people in a two bedroom, uh, in a two bedroom household that make you think that make you think and I didn't really have a once we went and once we got out of that situation I didn't have a really bad I didn't have a bed till like my senior year yeah I got I didn't I I was sleeping I was sleeping on the floor I was I was sleeping on the couch and and then I started like I said I started playing football ended up getting saved and once I got once I got saved that's when I started that's when I started um excelling in football and I was like I knew I knew it wasn't no mirror I knew it was no I knew it was not no coincidence Jalen Fly Sadler, former Austin P offensive tackle, here with us on 1045 the zone. You can follow him at Ball for Christ 13 on the socials. So now now let's t- take us through how you came to start this kind of campaign to get an opportunity with the Tennessee Titans because we started noticing you uh on our it's it's, it's impossible. You're a very I, that's not I'm not the first person to tell you, Jalen. You're a very noticeable man, <laughs> uh, very substantial, not just the hashtag mountain mover. Uh, that you display on social media throughout the course of your training regimens that you're documenting. Very interesting to follow along. But we noticed you outside the Titans practice facility starting, you know, about halfway through training camp. And I and I wonder what what this what made you decide just proximity to the Tennessee Titans, or was this the team that you felt that gave you the best opportunity to be able to compete for a spot? 
So actually what it is, man, I like I came out during the year of the pandemic. It was three days, but I got I was so close three days away. I had a senior. I had a senior bowl. I played great in my senior bowl. I had NFL scouts coming in to watch me at my pro day. Three days prior, NFL said, "Hey, listen." Well, no, they ended up canceling my pro day, and then after that, the NFL said, "All right, no rookie mini camps, and we can't bring rookies in the work like for workouts." So I did not have my. I didn't have the platform. I didn't have the platform to continue to show. Yeah, they seen I could play and stuff like that at the senior bowl I went to, and I talked. I talked to scouts there, but they were not. They didn't really get in and be able to see me testing, and see my physical and stuff like that. So that kind of put me at a disadvantage. So I realized I had to take the alternative route. So I'm like, okay. I reached out to the I reached out to the leader at my senior ball and I'm getting the contact information of all the scouts that were there. It was like over a hundred something scouts. And then I started sending out emails. I started making phone calls repeatedly, repeatedly. I sent over 10,000 emails. I'm actually going to post this later on my social media, sent over 10,000 emails, like called multiple, called multiple numbers, called multiple scouts. And when you're not getting the answers, you're not getting responses. And this is, this after a year and a half, I didn't train with legendary NFL coaches, Paul Alexander, John Jenkins, Jim McNally. Like these are pioneers. Mm. These are in it. Like these are NFL. NFL pioneers who can vouch for me, like who, who, who can vouch for me. And like when I got them guys making phone calls out and stuff like that on my behalf, and I'm not seeing, uh, and I'm not seeing any uh, results off that. I'm like, okay, now I got, now I got to take it to the next level because I didn't play it in the, um, the spring league, which is developmental league for like top NFL free edges. Like guys get signed from the spring league all the time. And I got great, I got great film from there. I played in the league with Johnny Manziel and uh, Josh Gordon. I got great film from there. And like, and I'm, I'm versatile. I play all five positions on the offensive line, six, eight, 325. I'm in the best shape of my life. So once you got all of those variables, you're like, okay, something else clicking. Let me go knock on their door. Let me, let me show them how dedicated I am. And like a lot of people say, a lot of people say they believe in the word of scripture. They believe in the power of prayer. They say they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. But in my opinion, what does that look like? What does my faith look like? from the outside like what is my faith looking like and my ideal of faith is man being uncomfortable and that's what i did that, that's what i did me and my fiance boarded me and my fiance um planned it out thought about it and was like all right we just want to go she actually sat out there with me for the first day yeah no i mean that's that's a special kind of commitment and, and something that you know especially in this kind of pursuit where so few people under normal circumstances jalen so few people make it to this level you have to have the support of not just you know your your in your your inner conviction and your strength and wherever it is that you derive your faith from but from those around you as well and a really really special thing to be able to have somebody who's as committed to this as you are so so far i guess now that we've been through several months the season has begun what what has been the fruit of that have you had any contact with the tennessee titans or any other uh any other nfl team right now how 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 far has this gotten you and what will be the next steps for you in in your pursuit i appreciate you asking that question that's a great question as of now as of now only thing that I haven't really seen any fruition aside from like the social media support and stuff like that. I haven't really seen any fruition. I have been in contact with a with a few teams, but nothing has really came to fruition of that. I don't know if it's something about the draft class that I came out with. Maybe they moved on, but I'm just here to let them know, like, hey, I'm still in shape. Hey, I still can play. I still can play this game at the highest level it can be played. But um, one of my one of something that was put on my spirit is, hey, it's my job to plant the seed, put the dirt on the seed, and watered i'm not god's supposed to make it grow so that's really my mindset i'm gonna keep my head down i'm gonna i'm gonna keep grinding i know something will come out of this i'm gonna keep pushing on this mountain i know it will be moved Uh, particularly here in tennessee i mean we're 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 now through four games of the nfl season ryan Tannehill has been sacked more than any other quarterback in the nfl i understand that it is it's difficult at any level and that these are very high caliber athletes that are playing for the Titans right now. But what what have you seen from them on offense? How do you think it is that you fit their specific style of play? And how do you think that you can then you can come in and immediately improve them as a unit? How I feel like I can come in is because I bring that I bring grit. I know Derrick Henry's a down, he's a down here running. He's pretty physical. He is a physical back. 
He's a physical back. And me, I'm a, that's how I play the game. I can't sing, I can't dance, but I can drive a man against <laughs> his will over and over and over. The game is meant to be played nasty. If I'm not playing the game nasty, I'm doing a disservice to myself. I'm doing a disservice to God. So that is the way I play the game. That's the type, that's the type of um for that type of back, that's the type of guy that you need. And also and also uh, with the pass protection, these, of course, these guys, um, these guys are blocking professional defensive ends. These guys, these guys are nice. These guys are quick, but I just, I just want to bring some, I just want to bring something to the table. I got all respect for those guys. I understand that they're, um, they're professionals, same as me. They're professionals, same as me, but um, all, I'm, all I'm looking for a shot. I'm hungry. I'm hungry and I refuse. Like I'm always watching and I'm taking notes. I'm watching, I'm taking notes. I'm critiquing saying what I can do in that, what I would do in that position. So I wouldn't make the same mistakes. It, I watch, I watch every game taking notes. Yeah. I, it's, it, I, I really do respect. I, I can't tell you how much I respect this dedication, Jalen, because there's so few people who would continue to, to look at it the way that you are. And obviously very few people have the kind of background that creates this mindset that you have to the, to this approach. Uh, it, it is, it is, it has to be uncomfortable at some times, but to see the way that you've kind of fought through that and that you've made found ways to make, make the uncomfortable more comfortable for you or work to your advantage. Uh, I think it's as commendable as anything that I've seen so far this year. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Jalen Fly Sadler has been our guest here on 104.5 The Zone. At Ball for Christ 13 is where you can follow his journey on social media, his pursuit to get into the NFL. Jalen, where, where else can people go? What else can people do? Because you do have supporters out here among yes, Titans sir. fans. And I, I think that they they are as invested, many of them are as invested in your success as you seem to be in your own success. Yes, sir. So you guys can go ahead and follow me at, like you said, Ball number four uh christ 13 philippians 4 13 i can do all things through him who strengthens me also you can follow me on my tiktok which is fly guy speaks and i, I do a lot of motivational i show some of my uh, testimonials and also some of my workouts to let everybody know hey i'm still in shape every and let also let everybody know if you need a word of encouragement i provide that so it'll be f-l-y-e god speaks Jalen, uh thanks so much for the time and continued success uh, and uh, and good luck in your pursuit. We'll be following certainly, and and um, I, you know I I have a feeling that we're going to catch up again in the near future. Oh yes, sir. I'm telling you, God God is moving. I'm gonna continue to push that mountain. Jalen Fly Sadler, kind enough to give us some time here on 104.5 The Zone. All right, when we come back, Mickey Ryan will be here. We'll talk about some baseball. It's an interesting story. I'm gonna give you some stats about the Titans' pass protection as well. I'm Buck Rising. It's 104.5 The Zone. Every Titans game is on 104.5 The Zone. You know what? I, I just love that. Your flagship for Titans radio is 104.5 The Zone.
last night to claim the wild card in the NL. An exciting baseball game. I re- it was stressful uh, if you had a team involved, I imagine, Mick. Hello, bud. Oh, yeah, what, a, what an awesome baseball game that was. But, yeah, what a, what a fantastic sports event that was. Thanks for, thanks for you know, literally just not even kicking me while I'm down, but, like, kicking me off the ledge of something so I can fall several stories down even lower than I already feel. How's your day going? Uh, it's going great because that's basically my entire career, Mickey. That's how I have this, – this is how I have achieved – uh, achieved success on the backs of others. So I figure you're the only person in my life who cares about baseball like this. And I, I, you know, there was nothing else on. So I watched the baseball game last night and I was locked on to the television screen the entire time. So I understand that you're probably miserable. You're waiting for spring training. Um, but like, what was your emotion when Pujols, Albert Pujols, who is Cardinals legend forever and ever, and somehow still playing in the MLB, he gets to the plate. For the Dodgers, what is, what is your thought process at that very moment? Uh, sweet mother of God, no, <laughs> no, please not this. Anything but this. Please, Lord, deliver us from this. And then I actually felt bad when he didn't win it and somebody else did. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, but no, to see Albert Pujol standing there, I think if you could have immediately, you know, put a, a, a poll out somewhere and had all of sports America answer that a hundred percent of people thought Albert Pujols would have hit a home run. He sent it for a ride, but he did not win the game. Luckily for the Dodgers though, uh, Reyes was brought on to make sure that they would, uh, the Cardinals would not leave without a win. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the Cardinals were well taken care of by Mike Schilt with that pitching choice. Yeah, I mean, the, the decision seemed interesting to me. And again, I'm only following baseball from afar. But, like, I knew that this guy, the closer that they brought in last night, has had lost his job. And that this the, would be the moment that they decided to make the pitching change after uh, after they had the winning, the winning run sitting on base at second. I, I thought that was insanity to me. It just didn't make sense. What, what was... What was your what were you doing on the couch like rabble and and uh, rabble and your family they're around you the dog whose name escapes me right now but looks like an Ewok remind me Coco 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 the dog who I, I am intimately familiar with it's the only dog in my life that I that we are friends I think I, I'm picturing Mickey Ryan who I know to be calm and serene and level headed in this instance set the scene in the in the Ryan household last night. Well, everybody had abandoned Coco and me. We were the last <laughs> two up to, to see this debacle. O- only us. Everyone abandoned us. You know, this was this was super late. The game went on forever. And, and let me just say this. As as much as I hate what happened last night, there are a lot of people who, who hate the MLB wild card game. I think it's the greatest tension in sports. So much I don't fun. think there's any more tense moment than the two wild card games. I absolutely love them until my team loses in one of them. But we sat there, and if you had asked me what's going to happen before the game, if you'd said, okay, here's three outcomes. Cardinals cruise, Cardinals win a close win, Dodgers win on a last second. And I'm not even saying base hit, home run. I would have said the Dodgers are going to win on a last second home run. That's just who the Cardinals have been. They had that amazing 17-game win streak. But before that, and even like the last game of the season, that well, it got rained out. The, the game before that, part of it got rained out. The Cubs hit a, a home run in the end to beat them. I would have believed this happened. So I just basically sat on the couch like somebody who was doing a march to their death um, and, and just awaited to see exactly how I would expire in this particular instance. And and that was there was nothing more perfect than a guy hitting like a buck 70 who was two for his last 78 hitting a home run off of Reyes. There's really no more appropriate ending to the 2021 Cardinals than that. Oh, it all comes full circle. Now you can hear more of this enlightened commentary, this wholesome, you know, feel good stuff from a true diehard St. Louis Cardinals fan from one to three today on Blaine and Mickey. What else can the people look forward to my brother? I do want to add one more thing just to show you how historically bad this was. <laughs> that's only the fifth time that's happened in the history of major league baseball, <laughs> a walk off home run in a postseason winner-take-all game. If that gives you any idea of the depths of my despair, Buck, it had only happened four times in human baseball history before yesterday. You know, I was hoping that you would save that for your own show, but I heard that stat on SportsCenter this morning. I texted Lucas. I said, hey, 
let's call Mickey. And this this is exactly what I imagined it to be. Thank you for delivering. Always, man. Uh, ben Portnoy, he reports on the uh, South Carolina Game Talks. He's going to give us the inside info today. And uh, Coach Doug Matthews, we got both of those guys. Can't wait. One to three with the hitman Blaine Bishop. He is Mickey Ryan at Mickey Ryan 1045 is where you can follow him. Always a pleasure to have Mickey a part of the show. I feel bad. I do. Do you feel bad about what we just did to our buddy? Because nobody's better than Mickey. I mean, I, lo- I love I love all of our teammates here. I love all of our fr- our our on air family at one oh four five. There's I love you know, I love not just the on air people. You know what I'm saying? I do feel bad because Mickey, I feel bad for Mickey. loves the Cardinals. I know. Like, I don't want to speak for Mickey, but I think the Cardinals hold the most special place in his heart of all of his sports teams. Yeah, but I mean. Right there next to Arkansas State. They just kind of share space in his heart. We never talk about baseball, but I'm watching that game last night. I'm like, man, this is fun if you don't have any kind of investment whatsoever. Like, I'm tweeting because I'm pissed and it's 1142 at night and Albert Pujols hasn't hit the walk-off home run. I'm just like, end this already. But it's a great, it's a great high stakes sports moment and i think baseball during the postseason baseball does that as well as anybody i mean honestly as well as anybody even as there's definitely a generational gap between people who follow this like you've got to be a toxic kind of individual to let a team any team infect your life for 162 games a year like you've got to be a special kind of sicko to let that sink in but there are people who do And it becomes such a part of your fabric of your day-to-day existence because it is day-to-day. The NFL doesn't happen with that kind of frequency. I mean, hockey maybe to a degree, but it's still not as mainstream as baseball is. America's pastime, right? So you felt all of that, especially with two really, really proud fan bases. And I know Braves fans hate the Dodgers, but it was a, and you know, I, I root for Mookie Betts, even though everybody here is probably like, no, bleep Mookie Betts. He plays for the Dodgers, not the Braves. And maybe the the few odd Reds fans who are just sulking in a corner somewhere because it's been a long, long time since they've been relevant. I don't know. I think people around here appreciate Mookie Betts. Uh, I don't know. I did this one time and I got buried. Really? Oh my god! I think it was. I th- it had to have been pre polls. I've never I, heard any Mookie Betts slander around here. I think it was last postseason. I think it was during a World Series last year. Well, like, yeah, you know, I how can you not? Root for Mookie Betts from Nashville, and immediately my my mentions were poisoned with, no, bleep that guy. He plays for the Dodgers. What's wrong with you, Buck? I just, so, you know, this is what you get for rooting for who, human interests. Yeah, Sports I guess fans people, kill you. You know, he it's sort of that MLB version of a super team, and I guess people just immediately turn to hatred whenever uh, that comes together. Yeah, I mean, you listen, the Dodgers are not a likable organization by any stretch of the imagination. 615-737-1045 is how you jump in on the conversation. We'll lead off with your phone calls coming up next. We will also talk about Ryan Tannehill and the pressure that he's been under off of our conversation with Jalen Fly Sadler, the offensive lineman who's trying to get a job with the Titans. That's it next. I'm Buck Rising. This is 104.5 The Zone. The Jacksonville Jaguars have Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence. We're not going to throw the flag on that. But they're still Jacksonville. And nobody they bring in can change that. The Titans and Jaguars. Coverage starts Sunday at 9 with Buck Rising on the Lee Company Countdown to Kickoff. On your flagship for Titans Radio, 104.5 The Zone.